the thing that is at the root of I-300, Initiative 300, is making capital or making money available to more people so that more people can invest in their business, can invest in their farm, can invest in their hog operation, can invest in their cattle ranch or feedlot or whatever it might be. Finding ways of getting creative about opening the money supply, opening financial opportunities to more people. I mean, our farm bill at the federal legislature, I know I'm not addressing I-300 here, because I want to tell you where the root of this is coming from. And that is, right now at the federal farm bill, I mean, 70% of all payments go to less than 10% of farmers, too. So if you're involved in agriculture, you better be it. And we actually, you know, to, to get the, the full advantage of that, rather than taking some of that money and investing it in new opportunities for new farmers or new ranchers, Right now, if you want to get involved in agriculture, it's a huge loan you've got to take out. And in a good year, you're making 240 you know, per bushel, right, on your corn. I mean, it's a tough go for a lot, a lot of times. I mean, even in a year when we top the sale, you know, the place that I work on, you're still not making enough, really, to, to make those types of investments. So how can we make more money available so people can actually invest in their operations? Um, what I can do is find ways of encouraging money to be available to more people so that more people can invest, all of us, not just the biggest of the big, not just the smallest of the small, but find a way to make it equitable so more people can invest in those opportunities. On the Iraq question, I supported the invasion of Iraq. I think that we needed to go there. I think we need to go there because I think America stands strongest when it asks questions of itself and asks questions of other countries. And says, are we as good as we can be? Are you as good as you can be? Let's together work for that potential. Let's together work for that hope. Now on the war in particular, I am frustrated with this war. I am frustrated that from day one, it has been mismanaged. That from day one, we have not been asking questions. That from day one, we fire generals rather than take their advice. Whether it's General Zinni or General Chalas Kasvili or whoever it might be, that we're firing them rather than listening to them. We went in with too few troops. We tried to do it on the cheap. We did not listen to the boots on the ground. The greatest lesson we learned from other conflicts was to listen to the boots on the ground. That frustrates me. It frustrates me because I have a friend who's stationed over in Baghdad and was telling me a couple of months ago that he opened a school for young girls. First time they'd ever hold a book in their hand. Just like that sack of flour. And then he tells me two weeks after, you know, that school I was so proud of, well, it got burned, it got torched, it got left. <coughs> we forgot the single most important lesson of the Cold War, which is diplomacy can be strong, especially when you use it more with military might. Look how good schools can be. He came out to our schools here in Nebraska, a study done on schools that were 100 and less. 100 or less students are some of the best performing students in the entire country. More, more of them go to college, more of them get better paying jobs, more of them become leaders in their whatever industry they choose. So there is a way to do it, and the fundamental thing that we gotta do is, what we can do in government is address the increasing number of students per teacher, that ratio continues to go up, uh, we can continue to make sure that the best and the brightest minds do choose to go into education. You only do that with committed teachers, and I know we have those, but we don't value those. We don't value those things. We actually discourage people from going in. Right here in our state, we are looking at a very serious problem in the fact that in 10 years, a lot of teachers are going to retire. We don't have enough people to fill those because we're not paying them enough, we're not encouraging them. There's all sorts of things we could do to encourage the best and the brightest of us to get involved in education. But the, the fundamental point is time on task, classroom size, invest in what's working 